Starting off with a new book, Symbiote Spider Symbiote Spider Man 2099 number one. This is the Greg Land Virgin variant, one in one hundred ratio. It's okay. It's good. It's definitely not the best of all the covers in that run. Do you think? No. Yeah. Not no. What What do some of the other covers look like? I'm gonna bring it up here. I was gonna say uh, I just can't wait for the for the foil to come out so <laughs> hey, i'd be okay if they did a foil with a spot foil just on the red that would be cool oh like those panini books used to do yes yeah or you know what they could even do have like where they actually have the acetate multiple layer cover oh yeah that yeah cool yeah yeah they need to bring I mean, that back this that, is the one in ten to... i oh, like that cool one design variant. yeah this is the one in 100. That's the one in 25. Ken Lashley. I like that. Yeah. That's the second printing one in 25. They're going to do a version of that. But there is a Miss Minutes variant on this one, too. I like this. Oh, that's a cool design variant, too. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but there is... A Linnell Francis U one that's going to be a second printing. That's really badass. What else is there? That's Todd Knock. Um, yeah, a lot of good covers on this one for sure. The Greg, oh wait, this one right here, the Todd Knock one is not bad either. Okay, so what is Marvel doing? So they got rid of Todd Knock to do the the floating headshots. And now Mark Brooks is doing a bunch of floating headshots. What are uh -huh. they doing? Well, Mark Brooks is damn good at those floating headshots, so I don't mind it. Yeah. It, it's cool because he's just doing a trade, like the corner box. He's just doing the corner boxes as, as covers. And... Yep, I guess. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah. And I like Todd Knock doing regular stuff again. It's almost like he's doing these uh, frame cover things that he, that he's got going on now, but... Yeah, Symbiote, Symbiote Spider-Man, number one, the 1 in 100 Greg Land variant. What is this one selling for right now? I mean, is it getting ratio? One, yeah, 150. Not bad. But very, but very, very few. I don't, are there, I don't know if there's any store variants for this. So, um, I mean, this one may not be, like, in huge supply. I'll oh, tell dang, you there Johnny got it for variants. 50 bucks? I'm no joking. store variants for this one. So, not bad. We need to start notating like all those uh, books, yes. those books with ratios that do not have store variants because I agree. Those are those are the ratios going to be to have like five, ten years from now. Yeah, yep. nobody, 100%. you won't be able to find them. Right, yeah. exactly. Like, and more than likely, they're you know, someone's either going to sit on them for a while or someone's grading them all. So yeah. maybe maybe what we need to do is anytime there is one that like that, I'll have a special thing that pops up and it's like goes on the cover and it's like a badge, like be on the lookout for this one because it's low, you know, something, something we should we should have something pop up for people to see that I think you know. Shout out to our boy Chad Cave. He says I'm just here for the dick sharing. So am I, brother. So am I. So good shit. Moving on. I don't dick share, but I like dick sharing the card, but I don't like dick sharing. <laughs> Moving on. I, I don't want to urban dictionary that phrase. I know. <laughs> yeah, don't throw that in your Google chat <laughs> or your Google search. <laughs> I mean, I'm in Texas, so it might just get blocked anyway. So. I guess it depends on who you're sharing dick with, but. You know. All right, moving on. I apologize. I blame it on Chad Cave. Rick and Morty Super Spring Break Special Number One, the Ellerby One in Ten. Now this is a wraparound variant. Have you seen the whole thing on this thing, on this image on this book? Yes, the other side is is a bit crazy. I'm gonna show it to oh. everybody here. It, it's Mr. Uh, Mr. Nimbus, right, or whatever. Is that his name? The guy right there on the front. Yeah, the on the foreground. Yeah. Yeah, so like you know it's gonna be something weird and sexual. Hey, hold on here. I'm showing you Oh everyone. Ronnie, we're just starting, man. This is we're we're all all three of us are gonna have to report to HR. 
I know. <laughs> All right, there we go, you guys. Here is the. I'm gonna cover up the chat. There is the. Everybody on YouTube can see the whole cover right now. So, um, what is up with the dude with the th thong? Is that a? I hope that's a. That got to oh. be. I don't know what's going on there, man. That that's a character. These are all characters from the show. So oh, okay. The, so the uh, uh, the dude in the helmet with a thong, he he dated Summer in like a apocalypse universe that was making fun of uh, uh, what's that movie called? Uh, someone in the chat won't remember it. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> I just got out of a stressful situation. Looks I guess. like John Cena. <laughs> yeah, yeah, John Cena. No. So here is your uh, oh, Mad that's... Max, Mad, Mad Max. Max. Okay, yeah. all yeah. right. Thank you. There we go. And and then the reason why there's two Beths, it's two alternate Beths from two different universes or whatever. Okay, all right. Well, there you go, Rick and Morty fans. You got a one in ten. That's a nice wraparound cover, and it's on the almost ten. What's this one selling for? Uh, fifteen to twenty, and it's been a Ooh. while since any Rick and Morty stuff is sold for anything, really. Yeah. So I was, I, I saw a nine eight because I was looking for books for buy the dip. Uh, of issue one sold for like seven sixty, seven fifty, somewhere around there. Is that good anymore, or is that not I, good? I don't. That seems like it was good for a nine eight. I don't know what that. I, Cause I thought that book dipped down to like 400, 500 whenever Roland had his like, you know, was going I'm through gonna, council culture. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to look really quick. Liger style saying this is a Jim Lee homage. Huh? Really? Yeah. The last sale ye was 550, but that was the only sale below like all last year. The lowest was 800 okay um 2022 so still... the lowest was 716 <laughs> jc that's the first thing i thought too i was like those aren't abs what the hell is it... <laughs> <laughs> is he talking what <laughs> what the fuck is going on <laughs> he's gonna piss in his face all right he's a sea creature <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't scales. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Lola XOXO, issue number six, Saya Ohm, one in ten variant. Now she also wrote this series, right? And is that yeah. Yeah, that's this is like her book. Yeah. What a great um, cover, th man. Yeah, this cover is gorgeous. What's up, Thorough? Twenty eighteen. Um, wow. Yeah, 2018. Uh, this is not the first. This is not from series one, though. This is from series two. Okay. I think. Um, but yeah, this cover's gorgeous. Um, it's a one in ten. It sold for hundred and fifty dollars this week. Um, but if you look at issue number five, which is the issue right before this, that one in ten is also just as gorgeous as this cover. So this sold raw for that that price. Uh yes, I think it was raw. Okay, I'm gonna look this up. We're gonna look up the number five because I didn't see the number five. The number five, I didn't see a sale for it, but when I went to just see what the try and see what the um, ratio was on it, I saw number five in in like um, a lot. Dude, a lot of these covers are really freaking good on both volumes. They are. They are. This. This reminds me of like Sin City. This gives me the Sin City vibes. Yeah, Jeez. look at that. I mean, that is crazy good, right? Yeah. Wow. Especially with the red like color splash on it. Like, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the if, you don't, if you don't, if you're not aware of who Sai, I mean, Sai has got some Ooh. amazing, amazing covers out there. That's the A cover. Let's go take a look at some of the other ones real quick. It's another great. A cover. Oh, look at this. Look at these. Look at this. These are all beautiful. Uh, so JC says it's still available on Aspen Store. There you go. This one's a limited and, edition. And it's gone. One in 12. Look at this one. This Talent Caldwell cover. All these are good. 
Let's see, I'm gonna. I, I will. I want that number five. I want this number six too. Let's see what this this one looks like here. Number three. You gotta beat all the sharks. I know, right? I didn't. I didn't even. Oh. Oh. Sometimes you just. <laughs> a lot of times you just forget. You forget your own advice, right? I know. <laughs> I I do it all the time. Like, uh, someone in the chat they sent me a picture of like like look at these two like rare to call books I got. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm a bit jealous, especially since they're not signed. Like, because it was like one of the Vampirella ones that oh, all yeah. the copies are, or a lot of copies are signed, I think. But I mean, more, there's more blue labels in the signature series. Not the point. He hit at the publisher and they had, he bought the last two copies they had. So, oh my gosh, man, when you start looking through this page, oh my gosh, there it is, $12.99. Oh, I am. I don't ever do this. Never <laughs> do I do this. I remember those Lola Spider-Man one uh, homages. Look at that. All right, I'm buying those five. <laughs> it's a limited one. Wow, great stuff, man. That's why I love the almost ten. They take you down these crazy rabbit holes like this. Excellent. Yep. Oh, and so. if you're drinking, shot because we went down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then how much did it sell for again? <laughs> one fifty and twelve ninety nine on Aspen store. And I just added both of those to my cart and I'm going to check out right now. Oh, you beat the sharks. Wow. Proceed to check out. I've got a I know I've got an Aspen account. I used to buy Aspen. I used to like on their yearly sales. I used to always buy something from them, but I haven't bought from them in years. But yeah, this is just gorgeous, man. Absolutely beautiful. How do you spell her her first name? Holy cow. Twenty dollars shipping for two books. <laughs> You're like <laughs> and <can't. laughs> Wow. Oh, that's okay. That's a UPS. Okay. I make sure you make sure you check it to UPS, USPS. It's still ten dollars, but hey, that's a lot better than twenty. Yeah. Oof. You're like, this better be priority. <laughs> Man. Yeah, because that's like double the price of like a ground advantage. Yeah, no kidding. Just saying. Yeah, they have all of them in stock, you guys. I mean Are you kidding me? That means it's that means it's print to order, JK. I don't know. I don't think it's print to order, but these are uh, I was, all I was, yeah, just fucking beautiful. All of them are good. I mean, look at the Valentine's Day one. Let's take a look at this. Come on, chop chop. Dang. And then you know Stein's breaking all his rules. You know he's promoting a store. But <laughs> oh my gosh, hey. he's purchasing books like while on the show. I never Dang. do. I never do that ever. <laughs> but I, just, but I, want, it, I want. I want. I want to. I want to do. It's because Joe's not here. It's a, yeah. I know. He's our more. He's our moral compass. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next, we have Dread and Alive Number Two. This is a very interesting book. Have you guys ever heard of this book? I had never heard of this book. Dread and Alive is a Jamaican-inspired multimedia series spanning comic books, novels, and reggae music created and written by Nicholas Da Silva, a multidisciplinary artist and musician known professionally as Zuluk. He's also the founder and editor-in-chief of Irie Magazine, and this follows Drew McIntosh before, during, and after being empowered by a sacred amulet created by the ancient Jamaican Maroons. Pretty damn nice. cool, man. That cover's really good. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of the covers are good. So, um I like I, I like how the medallion like shines in the light. I would be, like you still like in shadows. I'd be interested to know like to get an idea of how many were were released, you know? Yeah, it looks like I mean, like when you look at it, it looks like something was just released probably within the last couple of years, but this is 14 years old. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Um Oh, so ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. Um, yeah. 
the trade is really good, JC. I agree. They did a good job with the design of the trade. Oh, could, um, could this be like because like the the Bob Marley movies out and stuff like that? Do you think people like people that are into comics and into that? Is that is there a crossover? Probably not that much. No, I don't know. Um, all I know is it sold for one hundred and twenty five dollars raw this week. Wow. So, gotta be rare. That's Gotta probably be. not in. That, that's probably not going to be found in a back issue bin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I bet you it'll be found in a half price books though. I could see this be. being in a half price books. There, I'm still waiting on uh, on uh, O'Reilly to ship that. Really? The flux the flux capacitor. Did you get one? Yeah, you remember how they had it on the when they first put it on the on the internet on the website? No, I don't remember. So on O'Reilly's website, you can actually look up a flux capacitator and they have it listed as a part that you can order. What? I oh, really? I, I bought one when at first, when they put first put it on, because they actually had a price for it. And then they just never sent it. So I'm <laughs> oh, still waiting on it. Yeah, yeah. It's a joke. That's, that's not a real. Yeah, because it's not a real car part, right? Well, they could make it. You know, well, I guess I'm just waiting something. for the time traveler to like, you know, eventually yeah. like. Hold yeah. it, hold it. You just said this is not that's not real. What? <laughs> the flux capacitator? You, you just you literally just crushed my childhood. Oh. I'm that's still waiting not on my real? But the you know, we're getting the floating, floating hoverboard soon. I hope there so. It is. Gosh. So they did have it in stock, so someone must be using it. Quantity one. That's awesome that they did that. <laughs> that is so cool, man. Cheers to O'Reilly Auto Parts. Except for they took Yee's money. <laughs> I know. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> Dude, this has been on this website for like 10 plus years. That's like, awesome. If not more. I didn't know that. I never knew that. Maybe That's like 20 cool. plus years. I don't know. How long has this been on, on their internet or chat? Yeah, that's a good question. Let us know. All right, moving on. Oh, this is awesome. Vampirella, the manga twenty nine ninety nine. This is the Ashcan Gold Edition, but take a look at the regular cover for this also. You're going to see here in a second. is just as gorgeous, if not more gorgeous. There's the regular cover. But the Ashcan Gold Edition is had a nice sale this week, it sounds like, huh? Yeah, um, yeah, the gold sold for it, it, the, like they were only selling for like ten to twenty dollars, but it, it sold for fifty this week. Wow. Um, I there's a couple other Vampirella like smaller ash can that have like that leather feel. That like a lot of them are like red um, foil, but they were kind of cool. I really like the original cover to this man. It looks really good with her in the background like that, the side profile. Cool cover. Yeah, Both of them are cool. The, the, the glamour shot version. Yep, exactly. So fifty bucks for the Ashcan uh, Gold Edition. It's probably a rare book. You probably don't see very often. I'd imagine a lot of those these these Ashcans from you know the '90s are. But there's a lot of them also that aren't very rare that they printed a ton of. So because that was the thing. Remember that was kind of the thing in the '90s. Ashcans. Yeah. Oh yeah. For Where sure. did the term Ashcan come from? Because um, that's where they ended up. Yeah, the trash, trash can. can. Hey, oh, chat, let us can. know <laughs> if you know where the term, the comic book term ash can comes from. Let us know in the comments below. All right, moving on. Another Scotty Young book that people might not know about, The Spider King, number one, the one in ten Scotty Young variant. This is from 2018. Um, this reminds me of uh, Kingpin from... Uh, from Spider Verse, yeah. Oh, like yeah. It, with that little itty bitty head and those hum humongous <laughs> shoulders. Um, yeah, one in ten. It's just a little IDW book. Did anybody ever read the Spider King? No. I don't even know what it's about. Yeah, neither do uh, I. Uh, this is a hundred dollars raw now. Whoa. 
Dude, Scotty Young books. There's some tough to find Scotty Young books that are selling ridiculously right now. So if you have Scotty Young books, you might want to look and see, you know, if they're in good condition, get them graded and throw them up. Because they're one of the few comic books that are selling at crazy numbers still. Nice. But I have one of those hard to find Marvel second print. Scotty Young covers. Igor says still available on the original website. Really? There we go. Is that another one that's still available on the original website? What's the original website for this? On IDW's website? Or is it Scotty Young's? Let me look at Scotty Young's website while you're all looking there. <laughs> the Spider We're all King. shocking. Oh, he said just kidding. Oh, well, he's man. going. He's trying to make me buy more books. I know. So here you go. Here's some oh, Spider man. King stuff. Signature series, Scotty Young website. Check out. Boom. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. There's all the covers. Got a few more co cool covers out there of it. So, man, I was hoping uh, I might, might have another one to pick up tonight. Uh, Ghost Zapper says, an Ashcan comic is a form of the American comic book originally created solely to establish trademarks on potential titles and not intended for sale. There we go. That makes sense. Why do they call it Ashcan, though? That's the question. I really think it is because they, they, they were supposed to end up in the trash can. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Moving on. Next on the Almost 10 a really cool old school Simon Beasley cover. I can't tell if this is a blow book or a woe book. Call of Duty Zombies number five from Dark Horse in 2017. Simon Beasley did all the covers for these. And this is a yeah, well, interesting. His art, his art in general is always on that hit or miss line of do I like it or do I really hate it? Yeah. Like you can't ever really <laughs> tell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one's an interesting one for sure. Um, this sold for forty dollars. Whoa! It's just a it's just a regular cover. Wow! So, so how is she not a zombie if she has a bite on her knee? Does she have a bite on her knee? It's bleeding. Oh, but it couldn't be from a zombie. It could be from shrapnel. Oh, that's true. From all those grenades. She cut her own leg. She just she took a razor blade and just started slicing her jeans. And she was like, "Oh crap! I forgot to take my jeans off before I sliced the holes in them." Dang it! <laughs> now I cut my leg. Pretty crazy. Oh, is that man. how you're supposed to do that? <laughs> uh, Gary Brown says, "I stopped with issue three. Now this is a, a video game too, right? So Activision is involved. So it's one of those video game books. Pretty True. interesting." Yeah, and they did put zombies on the latest Modern Warfare Call of Duty again. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was I was always literally the worst uh, shooter. I could I just couldn't do it. I I couldn't control both joysticks at the same time to I'm like I suck. I, if, it, if I tried to play online, I'd get shot every time. Like mm. Like, I can't do this. I'm terrible. I'll just go well, back to playing sports games. And then as you get older, your your uh, reaction time gets slower naturally. You know, your hand-eye coordination uh, reaction time. That's why all the professional gamers are, you know, teenagers. Teenagers in, in their 20s. I think That's it's why? like... Yeah. Well, it's by the time you're age, like, 26 or something like that, it's like you can't compete against a 16-year-old. Really? Mm hmm Hmm. So there's science to it. So wh why don't they have, like, age groups, like a seniors tour, like for people over th over 30? <laughs> I, you're hired at e-professional, e-gaming professional sports <laughs> to make those decisions. <laughs> I, need, I, I, need, I need to bring that up. Be like, hey, you guys need a senior division. You need a senior division. And then a <laughs> senior age division. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, this next book... It's going to be one of the books that's going to be stuck in your head for a while. Trust me. It is rare, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. T, number one, from 
from 2006. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this because you're going to get multiple covers here that you're going to see. This is a Jim Steranko cover. This comic appears to be a press proof. Hence the very limited in num limited numbers and the Steranko cover was apparently rejected by Mr. T. The reason for the rejection does not seem clear. The rumors are th the rumors it was the yellow logo or the use of pink on the cover, but most likely the reason seems to be the presence of a half-naked lady on the cover, which was allegedly confirmed by MIG.biz, the publisher. Uh, so there were black and white press proofs and color press proofs, and I think some of them were sold at New York Comic Con. I could be wrong. But this all comes from Recalled Comics, Shout out to the great Recalled Comics. They rate this as super rare for smiley faces. This is a rare book right here, you guys. Yeah, if you see up in the in the top right-hand corner of that, it says estimated print run. No, not of that, of the article. Oh, right here? Estimated print run, 15. 15. Look how beautiful this the, the regular is. The black yeah, and white so, is good, but the the regular is freaking gorgeous. All right, I gotta say for 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 long short, stop copies me. We talked about this book a long time ago. Did you? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's an incredible storybook to like to hear about it too. Again, like so, if you didn't know about it, like now you know, and then yeah, like I don't think anyone's ever caught a whiff of this. Yeah, I've never, I've never even Look heard of this one. So the one that sold this week was the black and white, which is apparently the one that's more plentiful, um, and it only sold for forty dollars. Which I, I don't know if that's a good price or not a good price, but because I don't really know how many of them are out there, but um, I'd never even heard of this book. Neither, neither have I. I when I think the Mister T comic, I think that uh, the famous one with the, you know, him on the cover. Oh. Mr. The T Force. One. I think it was Mr. T Force or something like that. Well, wasn't he on the A Team cover too? I don't remember. I remember the Probably. Mr. T Force one. But uh, great Steranko art. Holy cow. I mean, the black and white shows the art even better, but man, the colored is gorgeous. So, since Mr. T rejected this, do you think he would sign this? No. He's very. He would pity he's very. Anyone that Religious. He would be asking him. <laughs> He's very religious nowadays, and I wouldn't oh, be surprised yeah. if it was because of the naked lady and the and the drugs and the guns. You could see a needle, you know, on the on the cover there, and you know, his whole are, thing was always positive. Are there any Mister T signature series books out there? Yes. Are there? I think so. For Mister T Force, I believe so. I could be wrong. Uh, Ask Tony. Tony would know probably better than anyone. He's in the chat. I, I love this I mean, man. I just, um, yeah, I do too. I would. This might be something to really keep an eye out for, especially the the uh, colored version because it is gorgeous. Damn. Yeah, when I when I saw this, um, so this week I was a, I I found a book that oh, I shit. didn't know that I won. You're right. Look at that. <laughs> Ghost Zapper says, "Wasn't there a signed copy in Recalled Comics you just showed?" <laughs> Holy cow! Look at that. Is that his signature? Yeah. Oh man, points to Ghost Zapper. He's the one that's paying attention to us. Hell yeah. <laughs> I blame the man. canvas. It's always the well, canvas. Well, what's funny? <laughs> What's funny is, so I saw this and I was like, man, so this is like stuff from like my childhood or whatever. Um, and then like earlier in the week, uh, I found a I Dream of Genie book that I didn't know that I really wanted until I saw the cover. And I was like, oh, man. And then I was thinking, man, I wonder if there's like a Barbara Eden signature series out there. I First of all, I didn't even know she was still alive, um, but she is. Um, and there actually are some Barbara Eden signature series books out there i want to show um, you something Let's see if i can find it uh shout out to our boy billy from economics and comics he did an eight billion genies cover um here you go check this out 
Let me open this in a new tab. He did an 8 Billion Genies cover f a while back that has a, a I Dream a Genie on it. And one of his uh, viewers and patrons sent him this in the mail. It's his 8 Billion Genies cover signed by Barbara Eden. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. Yeah, That's dope. So, he's, it's funny you're talking about this time because he sent this to me the other week. Like, we were talking about 8 Billion Genies, and he's like, look what I got. One of my uh, viewers sent this to me. I was like, holy oh, cow. That's crazy. Right? And it's signed in it. gold. It looks really good. 8 Billion Variants. That's funny. Yeah, 8 I mean, Billion the, Variants. <laughs> I mean, seriously, look how, look how good of a signature that – I mean, she's, like, in her 90s. Yeah. It was signed November oh, of last year. That's, that's like all those like Lucy cut signature, yeah, Lucille Ball signatures. Mm. Like, have you seen those? Like people that grew up in, in that from that time period, from like the the twenties to people that grew up before, I'd say the eight the seventies, they have mm. good penmanship and they have really good ri cursive writing. It's just beautiful. Um, Nowadays, so our then, penmanship's garbage because we don't use it as much. I blame the LSD. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is an excellent book to be on the lookout for. This is the type of book we love to talk about on the Almost 10. Let's move on next. The Men in Black, issue number one, the original Air Cell published book. Uh, Malibu Comics, I guess, bought Air Cell. I don't know if that's true, but from 1990, first appearance of uh, what are the agent K and J and J? Okay. Yeah. Um. It's yeah. This one, yeah. Um. This one set a massive record this week. So the previous all-time high in a 9.8 for this was $500, which if you really think about it, you're like, that's that's pretty, probably pretty low. Yeah. Um, well, not anymore. This week that uh, 9.8 sold for $1,700. So wow. three, three and a half times the previous all-time high. Oh, wow. This is a three-issue series, right? I believe so. I always Sounds look for right. these. They're so hard to find. Uh, they, they were low printed, and they're just they're super cool. But seventeen hundred dollars for nine eight. Wow. Yeah, with Dane Johnny saying first appearance of Will Smith. <laughs> no, no. Wonder World is right. Both agents were white in this comic. Uh, Will Smith. I don't know if they wrote it for Will Smith. They thought of Will Smith when he first came in, or if he just, um, you know, auditioned and they're like, "He's good. We got to get him in it." That'd be interesting to look into. Uh, so. For, um, yeah, for reference, how many how many nine eights of this do you think there are? Three hundred. Twenty five. Eight. Whoa! Dang. <laughs> I guess I'm way so too off high. on numbers, dude. Don't just don't ask Eight. me numbers. I'm so dumb on on. on I can't Eight. get any. I should have gotten super low. I should have just been like, I don't know, one, <laughs> <laughs> one dollar, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Eight. So, so yeah. So uh, CGC does have the it says first appearance of Agent J, Agent K, and Zed. So, yeah. um, oh okay, that's interesting. Eight, 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 eight nine eights. That's awesome. Oh, dude. so so it's the same story. Basically, then. Basically, uh, I can't remember. I don't know if I've ever read this. I need to read this. I'm gonna read this. That's for sure. I'll check it out. We'll talk about it tomorrow night, maybe. All right. Oh dang! Look at Dennis. He's dead on. What did he say? Ten. He yeah. said ten. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Next. Oh, this book is so cool. Die Kitty Die Number Two: The Dan Parent Variant. From 2016. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, this one's a really cool looking cover. Um, and Why if you, does the ghost ha have legs? I don't know, but, but he got he took the moon. Because because he's getting pegged. Oh, he's getting impaled. Those aren't his legs. Oh, I thought it was a pegging the first pegging yeah. cover. 
That's <laughs> awesome. That's a cool cover. Look at the moon's face. That's great, dude. Yeah, if you so there for each of these Die Kitty Die books, the Dan Parent did one cover and Fernando Ruiz did one cover. And um I I don't hate them. I don't hate the Ruiz ones, but the parent ones just look better for some reason. Um but these are not not the easiest to find uh at all any of these issues from Die Kitty Die from back then. No, um, they're not. this uh this one sold for fifty dollars raw. So if you do see it, if you do see any really any of these die kitty dies um for cover price, you probably should just get them all. So one of my all time favorite covers to collect are covers like this that have the space background and they have the different stellar colored stars and the different colored planets and they're usually old. They're usually from the fifties and before but they're they're so cool. It's just a dark black space, the different colored stars, and they're like ringed planets, moons, comets. I love that on the old old comics. Super cool. All right, next. I put this one on here. Tales from the Ozone, issue number one, from Russ Gibb. In nineteen sixty nine. That's pretty heck? crazy is book. What is that? One of is these like sold for $175 raw. This week. Man, that is some that is some drug-induced art. <laughs> Robert Crumb is in this. He does work in this. Uh there's a lot I guess this sold for 50 cents back in the day. So pretty cool, man. I heard if you I heard if you look that stamp at the top corner, like you start tripping. I like what it says, does this plane go to Miami? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, look at the people in the crowd, all the different people in the crowd. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So $175 Is that Betty Boop wrong. on the cover? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's or, supposed to be Betty Boop or if it's just a lookalike, but. That's, that's Petty Poop. <laughs> <laughs> 